Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Believe it or not, we're already into a new week. So on today's Motivation and Mindset Monday, I hopefully have a great show for you today. We're going to be talking about a topic that is certainly not going to resonate with everyone, but for the people it does connect with, it can be life-changing. And the reason is, as we always say, we could accomplish all of our goals if we only had the time, if we didn't have all of this responsibility, if we maybe had a few more resources at our disposal. And what I want to share with you today is maybe just a little bit different of a mindset in order to approach the problems that you may have right now so that you can overcome the challenges that would allow you to lead the life that you want. So if you are looking to up-level your life, if you're looking to accomplish a goal in any one of the big five areas with your family, your relationships, your health, your body, your career, your finances, your spirituality, if you're looking to improve one of those areas, I hope that today's show will resonate with you. And that is because the number one reason cited for most people not getting around to whatever their goals are is lack of time. It's not lack of resources. It's not lack of money. Those things are certainly possible. There's no doubt about it. But I've just found over the course of my career that for most people, you're able to make it happen. Most people, at least listen to this podcast, you're able to make it happen but there is maybe not a strong enough why. That's a big part of it. We've, we've talked about that before in the show. And then it's simply too many responsibilities, too many distractions saying you're going to start it next week, next month, next year, right? That's that's the thing. Whether it's, I mean, it could literally be something as small as a uh, like doing a, a functional medicine detox. We just literally finished our spring detox, so it's kind of on my brain. Um, or it could be like joining the gym. Or it could be, oh, I'm going to hire that personal trainer. Or I'm going to you know, find that assistant, like whatever it might be. It's just a goal, right? And those are small ones. So that's very, very small, but like, oh, I'll start it next week. But I'm talking about big goals. Do you need to lose 50 pounds for your overall health? Do you need to clear up an autoimmune issue that's really affecting your entire life? Do you need to make more income so that you could live the life that you wanted to, to be able to travel, send your kids to whatever schools they want, whatever it might be, right? Like, Whatever it is, your relationship. Do you need to improve your relationship or find that someone because you feel there's a void in that part of your life? I'm telling you right now, your goals can't be accomplished with a strong enough why and then the actual plan in order to be able to make that why happen. All right, I'm not going to go too deep in the why or the plan. Your why is what would keep you going when you have hit obstacles, challenges, roadblocks to accomplishing your goal. So the thing is, you say, well, I want to be able to lose the weight. Okay. It's not a strong enough why. Like, it's just not, oh, I want to, you know, feel better. Okay. Not a strong enough why. It's just not. Because the problem is like, it might get you, it might get you started, but it's not going to say, well, today's a rainy day. I'm not going to go out and go for a jog because maybe you don't belong to a gym or, you know, I'm, I'm tired today. I really don't want to go do my gym workout. It's, it's like, it's, it's not a strong enough why, but if your why is strong enough where I need to lose this 50, 100 pounds, because if I don't, I don't know that I'm going to see my children or grandchildren grow up, right? It's that type of why and it has to have deep, deep meaning. So again, insert your why for whatever it is. But I'm telling you right now, if the why is not strong enough, the likelihood you carry it through or stick with it and maintain it, not as high. All right. Now you have a strong enough why, but let's see do you have an actual plan implemented? Because if you want to lose the weight, great. But if you've tried it before or a dozen or two dozen times, like a lot of the people before they came to us have tried, it doesn't matter how strong your why is if you don't have the right plan. I mean, it's nice. The, the why is strong enough. It's great. But you're just going to get frustrated because you did the whole low-carb, 
forever plan, right? Like, and that, okay, that, that doesn't work, right? It can work initially, but not forever. So then what do we do? Well, we need a real plan. So there might be a short-term plan. I was actually just chatting with uh, someone about this the other day in the gym. I, I <laughs> 24-7, doing my workout, uh, someone recognized me and, and uh, always happy to chat. So chatted with them. They shared the program they were on. And I said, listen, this is literally the difference between short-term results and long-term goals. If your only goal is body transformation, this will work until it doesn't, right? And then that's hard to explain because then, then I spent a couple more moments discussing it and, and then they got it. They got it at the end like, okay, yeah, this is, a, this is an okay plan for 12 to 16 weeks. But what's the plan after that? What's the plan after the plan? That's what people are missing, right? So you need a plan. You need the why. You need a plan. Now, what do you need? The time. You need the time to be able to implement it. Now, honestly, uh, and I'm going to be, uh, I'm just using weight loss as just a simple goal today. It doesn't take a lot of time to lose weight. It doesn't. Because the initial part of losing weight is expend more calories than you take in. But that only gets you so far. We've talked about that many, many times in the show. You can't diet yourself into the oblivion and you can't exercise yourself out to your exhausted. Because you can't maintain that either, right? So people are like, you just need to eat less. Okay, so what happens to the person that they're eating 1,100 calories? Then they don't lose weight. Well, taking it to 1,000, 100 calories less is not going to do anything. 100 calories less? No, that's not going to be a needle mover. Okay, so now you're eating 800 calories. How few calories can you take in, right? You need nutrients. After a while, you're just going to be exhausted because your body's so depleted. Okay, well, that's not going to work. So you say, well, I'm going to exercise then more. All right, so you're at an hour a day. Is that sustainable? Maybe. Is two hours a day sustainable to break through a plateau? Probably not, right? So that's not sustainable. So but in the grand scheme of things, well, what would you do? Well, then you would rebalance your hormones. And, and I've talked about this on previous shows, so I'm not going to get into this is not a weight loss show here today. But really for weight loss, you need to dedicate about an hour a day. Part of it is to get in your meal prep and part of it is to exercise. And if you do that, you've really done enough. And if you plateau, well, you're going to look at your metabolism, meaning like for the most part, your hormones rather than just eating less, if you're already eating 12 to 1600 calories, again, like that's pretty much it. What do you, you can't really go lower. You really shouldn't because you need to get enough nutrients and then exercising. Well, are you doing 30 to 60 minutes a day? Take off a day a week or so. Like, again, it's like how dedicated your goal. Not everybody needs to work out a day every day. Uh, but if your goal is weight loss, well, then you should move your body. You, I mean, you really should. Like, even if it's just walking initially, no problem at all. Like, that's no problem. But that's not a whole lot of time. And you might say, well, 90 minutes is a lot. Of, well, sure, like it is. But how big is your why? If it's that important, can you wake up 45 minutes earlier, go to bed 45 minutes earlier? You might be sacrificing what? The evening news, a Netflix show? Not as, Is it more important than your why? Hopefully not. So you do 45 minutes in the morning, you do a half hour meal prep at night, you're done, right? Like that's what, and then again, you're going to take whatever you need to do in order to rebalance your hormones or do whatever you need to do. But again, that's not going to really take time. That's going to take certain lifestyle components, maybe getting more sleep. I'm going to be talking about more the connection between sleep and stress and weight gain on future shows, but that's not today. So that's not even like the best example. Overcoming an autoimmune issue. All right, you're going to follow essentially the de-stress protocol. You're going to change your diet, your exercise, your stress reduction, your toxin removal. But again, it's not going to take a lot of time, maybe an hour a day. That's it. And you deserve an hour dedicated to yourself. If there are 16 hours in a day, waking hours, and you sleep eight hours, or you're in bed eight hours, you have 16 hours. Again, I have a podcast called Missing Six Hours Per Day. I'm going to link that up today, episode 2278. I would love for you to listen to that show. I really think that show about finding that missing six hours per day is, is also going to be helpful. But today is not necessarily about that. Today is understanding that there are two days of the week for most people where you're not working, where you do maybe have a little extra time. Now, the reason why I said that today's podcast, today's show is not for everyone is because it's going to require a little bit of sacrifice. And I shared this with you. And, and again, that's why I do hope that you're tuning in each week and each day is two weeks ago. It was episode 2264. Uh, people enjoyed that show. They said they got a lot out of it. Because it's the understanding that everything you want in life, everything you want is then on the other side of hard work and sacrifice. I mean, it really is. And the crazy thing is, is that also not doing the thing and the work and putting in the effort is also a sacrifice because you're sacrificing the life that you want. 
or the goal that you want. And, and so definitely tune into that show for all the details. But what I want you to realize is that the weekends may be your best opportunity for creating the life you want. So instead of the partying, instead of the resting, instead of the just not doing anything on the weekend, this could be your opportunity to get in more of what you need in order to accomplish those goals. But it's going to be extremely difficult from a mindset perspective because we've grown accustomed to, at least in this society, that the weekends are for rest. The weekends are for recovering from the Monday through Friday. Now, I would love it if your Monday through Friday was so amazing that you didn't need the weekends to recover from it. That's what I would truly love. That's living a life that you really want. But maybe you don't like your job or jobs or whatever it is right now. So what I'm saying to you is this. Saturday and Sunday, you're up for 16 hours each day. That's the way it works. In bed for eight, uh, awake for 16. You have 32 hours. Now, again, I'm realistic. And I realize you may have a family, you may have a partner, a spouse, you may have obligations. I totally understand. So I'm not saying that you're going to use all 16 waking hours, but just, again, let's do a thought exercise. So before we immediately cancel out this idea because it's crazy, it's working too hard, listen, I get it. I understand. But I'm trying to go back to that why. How important is your goal, right? How important is it? Because if it's really important, then maybe we should just think and open our minds to another possibility. So... I'm not saying you're going to wake, you're going to work towards your goal all 16 hours. I totally get that. I understand. But let's just think about it. So you have 16 hours a day. You have 32 hours over the course of a weekend. If we think about it, your average job is about, what, 40 hours for the week. That's getting pretty close to a full-time job just in two days, right? And what does that mean? Well, it just means like, think about everything you get accomplished or you can do in a 40-hour work week. Well, we've got 32 hours on the weekend. And I'm not saying that there's any wasted time for your 40 hours either, but let's just say that we took that down a little bit, right? Let's say we took it down to only 20 hours for the weekend. So instead of 16 hours, we took it down to 10 hours a day, right? So 10 hours a day instead of 16 hours a day. That's probably a whole lot more realistic, right? We can have our breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We could maybe go to the gym. We could maybe hang out for a couple hours at night. Like all of that makes sense, right? Take Take three hours off before bed. You have some breakfast, lunch, dinner. You can ease into the day however you want. And then it's, it's work. Well, why would you ever want to do this? Well, the reason is, let's say you don't like your job, right? And you want to get a new job, but you need other skills. Well, what would you do? You could study towards that new job. I know many people right now in accounting. I know people who work specific city jobs that are studying for that next level certification. They will earn more and they'll have more job advancement opportunities. I know busy moms and dads who are starting to become certified health coaches or some other profession, and they could do that job also on the weekends, right? So they can do that there. Now, why would you want to work at all on the weekends? That's for relaxing and for family. I totally get it. I understand. And maybe it should be, but it depends on what that why is and that priority. Because if your goal is my family really needs to earn an extra $25,000 this year, and that would make an enormous difference in our life. Well, if you can't get that raise in your job, how would you make an extra? And let's do the math. $2,000 per uh, month, right? It's about 24,000. Okay. Well, then how could you make that $2,000? Well, we would need to make what? $500 in a weekend, $250 per day. Well, if you were, if you got paid $25 an hour, and you work 10 of those hours, well, then that would do it, right? Like that would do it on, on just on each day. And again, I'm not here to, to share with you any financial-based advice. That's, that's far from it for me to ever do that for you. I'm not a financial expert. All I'm trying to do is simplify some of the most complicated things that we think about in our life. And what I want to do is I just want to impress upon you. Sometimes we're able to create the life that we want if we're willing to sacrifice a certain period of time. I also look at this as maybe you don't need to give up every single weekend, right? Maybe this is a 12-week deal, one 30, you know, 90-day period that you have with your partner, spouse, or family. And what if 
it's not for 16 hours a day or even 10 hours a day. What if it was for eight hours, right? What if you worked from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday? Not on your regular work, unless that was helping you in some way, but you worked on whatever that goal was that you had to accomplish, whatever it was. Maybe it was doing extra exercise. Maybe it was expending a lot of calories. I don't know. That wouldn't be my plan. But like, whatever that goal is, maybe you're were, maybe you were looking to write your book, right? Okay. You're looking to write a book. You're looking to start whatever. You're looking to start a podcast. Well, you need to learn how to do that, right? So you need to take a course on it. You need to do something to learn how to do it. Well, if you work from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m., you could take a working lunch if you needed to. And then you're with your family from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m., when maybe the, the kids went to bed or whatever it was, you're still getting a quality day in there with them. They're seeing their parent as a true, again, kids don't listen to what you say. They watch what you do and they model that. So now you're working and your child's like, well, they're working towards something that's really important to them. That's their goal. They realize that it takes hard work in life to accomplish what you want. And they begin, they may model that then when they're older, but you're doing it not as a source of pain, as a source of pleasure. You can explain it to your family. This is something that I really want for me. I believe it will benefit all of us, however you want to look at it. But also, writing that book, accomplishing your podcast, uh, looking to get that certification, whatever it might be, it's a finite period of time as well. I'm not asking you to give up your weekends for no reason at all. I'm saying maybe we should think about it in terms of accomplishing the thing that you can't seem to get done with your Monday through Friday. It's all that I'm asking you to think about. If the before work and the after work isn't working either, maybe it's because you're already overwhelmed Monday through Friday. Maybe when you don't have as many thoughts and obligations on your mind with the weekend, that 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. may work. If we do that, we're putting in, what, two eight-hour days. That's not bad. Right? 16 hours, that's more than a third of the, uh, a normal work week. You'd be accomplishing what? And it's focused. You'd probably be accomplishing a half a year's of work in, in a year. And again, I'm not saying that you should do this for that longer period of time. I just think that most of our goals could be accomplished within a 12-week period of time if we were to dedicate ourselves now to that. And I'm not here you know, reprimanding you or, or even saying that you should do this. But what I want you to start to think about, this is more of a thought exercise, is can you accomplish your goal? Do you have enough time to accomplish your goal? And if this would give you the time, then I simply need you to think about why won't you accomplish your goal? And that's a harder one to live with. It really is because you're saying, well, I heard this guy present to me a way in which I could take some of my weekend, not even all of my weekend, and dedicate it to the thing that I need to do, and yet I still am not doing it. And then you have to ask yourself that hard question is, why won't I do it? And sometimes it's not that you don't want the thing. It's sometimes that maybe it doesn't have enough meaning to you, or maybe there's a fear of success. Maybe there's a fear of failure. Maybe there's other things that you need to work on on a much deeper level that you haven't come to grips with. And so when you start to ask yourself these questions, and again, not scold yourself, right? We're no longer children. We want to understand is like, as an adult, what do I need to work on maybe from a psychological level that can make this that much easier and also that much more enjoyable? You, and I look at it as you're getting to do this thing. You're giving yourself the time in order to accomplish this. You're teaching your children or sharing how important it is with your partner or spouse that you're doing this. And you're telling them why it makes a difference to you and why it may make a difference to them as well. If we start to look at life differently, we get to ask new questions. If we ask new questions without judging ourselves or judging other people, dramatic things can happen. They really can. If we stop playing the good, bad game, we stop judging and we say, this is what I want. It's not good. It's not bad. It, doesn't, it shouldn't matter to anybody else. This is what I want. Then you can start to let yourself live life a little bit more. You get to do the things that you've always wanted to do. After all, like, what is your life for? Right? Like, what is life for? Do you not get to do the things that you want to do in life? Is it supposed to be a 100% sacrifice of self? I just don't believe that. I believe that you should be of service to other people. 
But I also believe that you can be one of those people. I do believe that you're able to help yourself. I've always believed, a little later in life, I realized this, but I've, I've believed, and I certainly believe now, that it is always easier to pour out to others if your cup is full. I think it is so difficult to help other people if you are not in a position of strength to do that. The stronger I get, the more people I can help. That's the truth. Literally, the stronger I am, the more I have to give. The more resiliency I have, the more experience I have, the more I can share in all areas of my life. So I just ask you to think about this for a moment. Maybe replay the podcast, maybe listen to it again. Could you carve out a little bit of extra time, a little bit of personal time? Not for selfish reasons, not for no reason at all, but because you have a big goal. You have something you want to accomplish. And you know if you do that, your life will be dramatically better in a way that will improve your happiness and the happiness of those close to you. And that's a good enough reason. So hopefully today's show was helpful. I'm always here for you. Please let me know if you have any questions. And of course, if the show was helpful, please do feel free to share it with anyone else you believe it could serve. Before you go, I wanted to ask you this question. What if I could teach you in just a couple of hours how to transform your thyroid, hormones, adrenal, cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight loss, energy, mood, brain, pregnancy, anti-aging, or many other health-related issues? After 20 years in private practice, after seeing and overseeing a quarter of a million client appointments, I sincerely feel I have the real-world data and have found the answer you've been searching for. So what I've done is spent hundreds of hours of my own time refining what you need to know in order to uncover your underlying root cause health issues and then begin to rebalance the body and bring it back to a state of robust health and wellness. I'm going to teach you exactly what I do in my private practice so you can understand how you got here and now what you need to do in order to heal. You'll receive all of the important success checklists, protocols, and even ways to customize it to make the program fit your busy life. And you'll get all of this at a fraction of the price. Let me save you the time, money, energy, stress, and frustration of not knowing what to do next. Instead of reading dozens of books on the topic and seeing multiple practitioners, I will condense everything that you need to know in just a few hours of video tutorials that you can watch and listen to anywhere. Together, we will make this healing process an enjoyable one that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I wish you all of the best of health and happiness, and I hope to be able to guide you on your healing journey through my health results accelerators. Simply choose the health imbalance you're currently suffering from, and by the end of today, you'll know what went wrong and how to get well again. I guarantee it. For details, head over now to stephencabral.com forward slash courses.